Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm gonna be bringing you a, another review today and this is going to be of the Bull Bay Assault. So let me show you this guy. So this is a really nice rod. Um, I've used it a couple times. I still left the plastic on there just to show you guys that it's still kind of new. I used it twice. And on the two times that I used it, I've gotten both pretty large snooks. So that was enough for me to say, okay, it's time to bring it out and go ahead and do a quick review on it. Uh, just my initial impression on this rod. So this rod is very nice overall. Um, very nice cork on here. It is a double locking reel seat, which I really like definitely when you're fishing off jetties and kayaks and anywhere near like standing over the water, not really a shoreline. This is nice to have because you don't want to lose your $300 reel in the water. So very nice blank on here. Um, very strong. These guides are also very nice guides. These are Fuji guides. Now with this Bull Bay Assault, it's made in America. Um, this is the seven foot, 12 to 25 pound heavy fast action. And it is a beautiful rod. Uh, it's very, it, to me, it's very beautiful just because I like the all black. I like the matte black color on it, black guides, black. Everything's pretty much a dark gray black color on here. And it's very, very strong as far as the backbone on here. The action's very nice. Um, it is not too heavy uh, as far as weight of the rod for this heavy action. I would say it's probably close to if you were to pick up a medium heavy like Mojo, um, maybe like a medium heavy Legend um, or one of those. Probably like another good example would be a um, probably like a 7.6 medium heavy uh, Stellar Light would be another good comparison as far as the weight if you've held any of those rods. This would be a similar weight to that. But the backbone on this guy is incredible. Uh, I was able to force up two uh, snooks, a 34 and a 33 while fishing around the pilings. And this was able to keep their head above the water. Um, I was able to break their initial run. So overall, this is a very, very nice rod. Uh, I wanna say the price point on this is right around 200 bucks. So it's not a cheaper rod, but at the same time for something made in America, something with good quality components, I would say it's in the cheaper price point. Um, St. Croix Avid would be a similar rod to this as far as price point a little bit. Uh, Avid's around 230 240 I want to say. So, and that's made in America. I think that's the cheapest made in America rod you can get from St. Croix. Uh, if you know me, I pretty much only fish St. Croix, Star Rods, and now I'm fishing Bull Bay. Um, it's a beautiful rod. I will say though, I was using a Banshee and um, I actually had to return it because the Banshee just had no backbone. The backbone of that rod was very similar to like an ugly stick. It will flex like the rod is one of those things like it i don't think you can break it on the other line is you have no backbone to turn the fish to break the runs um and it was not what i was looking for i didn't need a light rod uh the rod that i was using from uh for the banshee was going to be the medium uh heavy and usually a medium heavy rod can turn fish can you know break their runs and everything and that one did not have the backbone for it so brought it back in uh they were nice enough to go ahead and swap it out for this one. I wanted to give Bull Bay another shot because I just think that wasn't what I was looking for. When I saw the Assault, I saw the setup on it, I saw the backbone. Uh, this was the one that I went with. It's just a beautiful rod. I do like that the guides are double set, so it's going to be a top and a bottom on all of them. Uh, pretty much what that ends up doing is just giving a little bit more support to the guides, uh, a little bit more connection to the rod. Definitely when you're trying to flop fish, turn fish, and stuff like that. It's just a little bit more sturdy. Um, you're not going to bend them, and it's nice to use those on boats and going to be using this on the bridges, uh, pilings, and stuff like that. Um, it's just going to be nice because it's going to be a little bit more durable. Double locking reel seat is a really good component, too. That's another nice one. I do like it. It has a hook rest up top, and um, the cork on this one is not, like, super long. Uh, it's an average size. It's the size of my hand, about 10 inches, so let's say this is about a 14-inch cork. And, um, you know, there's some rods that will run 16, 18 inch corks on this just uh, on the bottom. So there's no reason for that to me for what I'm looking to use this for. I want a really small one so I don't get it kind of jammed up on anything around the, you know, the bridges and everything. So what I pair this up with, and I'll go to show you the size on there. A good reel for this is, to me is going to be the Slammer. So this is the Slammer that I'm running on it. It's a Slammer 4. Bought it just for this setup and it fits like a glove. It's just a beautiful setup. Uh, very strong, yet still pretty lightweight for what I'm using this for. Uh, this is going to be my jetty rod. 
this is going to be my um you know bridge fishing dock fishing uh, pretty much the rod that I'm going to be using to muscle those snooks out of there. I don't want to give them, you know, any chance of getting away. So 40 pound braid on this, uh, 220 yards on the pen slammer of 40 pound. And the line rating on here is going to be 12 to 25. So 40 pound is not super heavy for this setup. And um, it's just a beautiful rod, beautiful reel, really nice setup. I would say definitely check out Bull Bay. Uh, American-made company. Go ahead and show them some love uh, instead of so outsourcing like they probably could. You know, they're making them right here in the U.S., so it's really nice to see. And as far as quality of the workmanship, it is a beautiful rod. I haven't found any flaws in it. So, but there's a slammer on there, 4,500 size, so you can get a picture of what it looks like sitting on there. And it's a pretty well-balanced setup also. So I want to say the balancing point is right there. So that's where the rod's balanced at. Very nice. Very very good reel overall. Very good setup. Um, I would say if you're looking for something to use off the boat, going for maybe some gags, going for uh, maybe some snooks and reds around docks and pilings, going for you know anything that where you have to rip them around and you're looking for a little lighter weight setup instead of going with like an 8,000 Gosa, and on a extra heavy rod or a paraflex, um, you know, something that is ridiculously heavy. This is a great setup. I think you can muscle most of the fish up. Um, definitely just for the common snooks, reds, and, um, you know, even going into the tarpon season. I think this could probably handle most tarpons that you hook up to. Definitely if you get them on the boat and you're able to chase them down and everything, this would be a fun fight. And now, if you get into the 200 pounders, 300 pounders, stuff like that. I'm going to say you're going to need something a little bit bigger than this setup, uh, just so you can turn their bodies and everything. But I would say it's a nice inshore heavy setup and around, you know, docks, pilings and stuff like that. It's a great rod. Uh, definitely check them out and go show them some love. Well, thank you guys for watching. You have a great night, great day. Everyone take care. God bless.